I guess it all started to go downhill about a year ago, but I only pieced it together recently. My wife, Megan, and I have been married for nearly 15 years. We've got two kids, a house in the suburbs, and everything that, on paper, looks like the American dream. But what I didn't see coming was how quickly that dream could turn into a nightmare. When we first got married, Megan was everything I thought I wanted, smart, fun, and someone who always kept me on my toes. Over the years, though, something shifted. She got this promotion at work, started spending more time at the office, and less time at home. At first, I chalked it up to the usual stress of moving up the corporate ladder. Hell, I was proud of her. She was killing it, making more money than I ever had, and it felt like we were building something solid for our future. But then the late nights became more frequent. The business trips piled up. I started noticing how she was on her phone a lot more, and not just casually, she was secretive about it. You know that feeling when someone's phone buzzes, and they snatch it up like it's a ticking time bomb? That's what Megan was doing. I didn't think much of it at first. I mean, we've all got our moments, right? Maybe she was just busy with work stuff or stressed out. Except, when you've been with someone long enough, you can tell when something's off. We stopped having real conversations. Sex was practically non-existent. And when we did manage to be in the same room, it was like there was this invisible wall between us. Everything I said seemed to annoy her. If I asked about her day, she'd snap back with, you wouldn't understand, or it's just work stuff, don't worry about it. The woman who used to share everything with me was now a stranger in our own home. I convinced myself it was just a rough patch. Couples go through ups and downs, right? We had kids to raise and bills to pay life was busy, and sometimes relationships take a back seat. But there was one night in particular when I started to suspect something more. It was late, maybe around 11 p.m. Megan was out on one of her business dinners again, and I was sitting on the couch, nursing a beer, flipping through channels, trying to ignore the nagging feeling that something was wrong. Her phone was sitting on the kitchen counter, buzzing with notifications. She'd left it unlocked and oversight, I'm sure, because she usually kept it pretty locked down. Curiosity got the better of me. I picked it up. I wasn't even planning on snooping, I just wanted to know what could possibly be so important that she was glued to it all the time. And that's when I saw it. A string of texts from some guy named Matt. Nothing suspicious at first, just a bunch of messages about work. But as I scrolled further, the texts got weird. Flirty. Inside jokes I'd never heard before. And then, there it was, can't wait to see you this weekend, babe. Got the room booked already, winky face. My stomach dropped. I read it again, thinking maybe I misunderstood. But there was no mistaking the intent behind those words. This wasn't just some harmless work friendship. Megan was having an affair, and I was the clueless husband sitting at home, babysitting our life while she was off fucking another man. I remember just sitting there, staring at the screen, feeling like someone had punched me in the gut. I wanted to throw her phone across the room, smash it into pieces, and yet, I couldn't look away. I needed more proof. I needed to know how deep this betrayal went. So I kept scrolling, reading every sickening detail of their plans. They'd been meeting up for months. Hotel rooms, weekend getaways. All while I was at home, thinking she was off working late or on another one of her business trips. That night, I didn't say a word when she came home. I just stared at her, wondering how she could look me in the eye after what she'd been doing. She didn't even notice. Just kissed me on the cheek, said she was exhausted, and went upstairs to bed, leaving me alone with my thoughts, feeling like a complete fool. And that's how it all started unraveling. The more I looked, the more I found. I didn't sleep that night, or the next few nights after that. I started watching her more closely, trying to figure out if there were other signs I had missed. The way she'd smile at her phone, the work trips that suddenly seemed suspiciously timed, the way she'd turn her phone face down when she was around me. It was like living in a nightmare. Everything I thought I knew about my marriage, about Megan, was a lie. And I was left questioning every moment, every memory. How long had she been cheating? How could she do this to me? To our family? 
I knew I couldn't keep pretending everything was fine. Something had to give. After discovering those messages on Megan's phone, I felt like my whole world was collapsing. Every day that passed, I found myself obsessing over what I had seen, replaying conversations in my head, looking for signs that I had missed. Was this affair new, or had it been going on for years? The more I thought about it, the more questions I had. But the one thing I knew for sure was that I couldn't just sit there and take it. I had to do something. First things first, I needed to get the kids out of the house. I didn't want them to see any of this unfolding. They didn't deserve to be caught in the crossfire of their mother's mess. So, I packed up their things and made an excuse about taking them to my parents' house for the weekend. It wasn't hard to convince Megan. She seemed more than eager to have the house to herself, which only confirmed my suspicions. I told her I was heading out to give the kids some time with their grandparents and to get a little break. I watched her reaction closely but she played it cool, pretending like everything was normal, like she hadn't been sneaking around behind my back for months. After I dropped the kids off, I drove back home and parked a few streets over. There was no way I was going to leave Megan alone in the house without knowing what was really going on. I had installed security cameras around the house a while back, mostly to keep an eye on things when we were away. Little did I know I'd end up using them to catch my own wife cheating. I opened up the camera app on my phone, feeling my heart pound in my chest. For the first few hours, nothing happened. Megan went about her routine, fixing herself a drink, watching TV, doing whatever it is she usually does when I'm not around. I started doubting myself, wondering if maybe I had been wrong. Maybe she wasn't planning to meet up with him tonight. Maybe I had gotten ahead of myself. But then, just after 8 p.m., a car pulled up in the driveway. I zoomed in on the camera feed, and there he was. Matt. The same asshole whose texts I had read just days before. He got out of the car like he had done this a thousand times before, strolling up to the front door like he belonged there. My blood boiled. I watched as Megan let him in, a smile plastered on her face, and the two of them kissed right in the entryway. I could barely believe what I was seeing. The audacity. They didn't even try to hide it. They went straight into the living room, laughing and flirting like they were on some romantic getaway. I felt a rage bubbling inside me that I had never experienced before. My first instinct was to rush over there, kick down the door, and rip that smug look off both their faces. But I stopped myself. I needed to be smart about this. They were trespassing in my house, my house, and I was going to make sure they both paid for it. I dialed 911. 911, what's your emergency? My wife is at my home with another man. They're trespassing, and I need officers here immediately. Are they violent, sir? No, but they're not supposed to be there. I'm the homeowner. I'm not there right now, but I've got security footage showing them inside. The operator assured me that officers were on their way. I couldn't sit still, though. My hands were shaking, my pulse racing as I watched the camera feed on my phone. Megan and Matt were getting comfortable on the couch, completely oblivious to what was about to happen. About ten minutes later, I saw the police car pull up on the camera. The officers knocked on the door, and I could see Megan jump up, startled, scrambling to figure out what was going on. Matt stood there, looking confused as hell, trying to act like this was all some innocent misunderstanding. I was already on my way to the house. I needed to see this play out in person. When I arrived, I saw the two of them standing in the living room, faces pale as the police questioned them. Megan looked like a deer caught in the headlights, trying to explain her way out of this, while Matt stood there awkwardly, avoiding eye contact with anyone. I walked in, and the moment our eyes met, she knew it was over. Megan, I said, my voice surprisingly calm given the storm of emotions raging inside me. What the hell is going on here? She stammered, trying to come up with an excuse. I? I can explain. Explain? You're standing here in my house with him. I pointed at Matt, who was doing his best to shrink into the background. What is there to explain? It's not what you think, she said, her voice shaky. We were just talking. He came over to talk. I laughed 
shaking my head in disbelief. To talk? So, you kiss every guy you talk to, huh? Is that how it works now? Megan's face twisted into something ugly, a mix of guilt and defiance. I didn't mean for it to happen like this. I was done listening to her excuses. I turned to the officers, who had been standing by, watching the whole scene unfold. I'm the owner of the house. I want him out. Now. The cops didn't hesitate. They escorted Matt out of the house, and as he passed by me, he muttered something under his breath, probably an apology, but I didn't care enough to listen. I was too busy watching Megan, who had sunk into the couch, her head in her hands. Once the police left, it was just the two of us. The silence was suffocating. I stood there, waiting for her to say something, anything that would make sense of this mess, but all she did was sit there, avoiding my gaze, her face buried in her hands. I couldn't hold it in any longer. How long, Megan? How long have you been sneaking around with him? Her voice was barely above a whisper. A few months. A few months? I repeated, stunned. Jesus Christ, Megan. We have kids. We have a life together, and you're willing to throw all that away for this? She finally looked up at me, her eyes red and swollen from tears, but I wasn't about to feel sorry for her. It wasn't supposed to be like this, she said. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I scoffed. You didn't mean for it to go this far? What the hell does that even mean? You brought him into our house. Megan stood up, her voice turning defensive. I was lonely, okay? You've been so distant, and I. Don't you dare try to pin this on me, I cut her off, my voice rising. I've been working my ass off to support this family, and this is how you repay me? By fucking around with some guy behind my back? She didn't say anything, just stared at the floor, her hands trembling. It was like all the fight had drained out of her. But I wasn't done. Not by a long shot. Do you even care about our kids? I demanded. Do you care about what this is going to do to them? She winced, her lips quivering. I do. I just. Save it, I snapped. I don't want to hear your excuses. I couldn't stand to look at her anymore. I turned and walked out of the house, leaving her there alone. I needed to clear my head, figure out what the hell I was going to do next. As I got into my car and drove away, one thing was clear, the woman I thought I knew, the life I thought we had, was gone. After driving around aimlessly for what felt like hours, I found myself parked in a lot near some random strip mall. I sat there in silence, gripping the steering wheel, replaying everything in my mind. The images of Megan with that guy, the look on her face when the police showed up, it all felt surreal. How the hell did it come to this? I kept thinking about our kids. They were at my parents' place, thankfully unaware of the shitstorm happening back at home. But how long could I keep this from them? How could I ever explain this to them without completely shattering their world? I couldn't keep running. I had to go back and face her. As much as I hated it, I needed answers. I needed to understand why she did this, why she risked everything we had built together. I pulled up to the house, my heart pounding as I walked inside. The house was dark, except for the faint glow of the kitchen light. Megan was still there, sitting at the kitchen table, nursing a glass of wine. Her face was a mess of dry tears and smeared makeup. She didn't even look up when I walked in. Let's talk, I said, my voice cold. I sat down across from her, the table between us feeling like a gulf I wasn't sure we could ever cross. She stayed quiet for a moment, staring at her wine glass, swirling the liquid around as if that would somehow help her find the right words. Finally, she spoke, her voice hoarse. I know you hate me right now. I didn't say anything. I just stared at her, waiting. I don't even know where to start, she said, her voice breaking. It's all such a mess. A mess? That's an understatement, I shot back. You've been sleeping with another man for months. Our marriage is a joke, and you brought him into our house. The same house our kids live in, Megan. Do you even realize how fucked up that is? She winced but didn't argue. 
I wasn't thinking, she whispered. Clearly, I said, my anger simmering just below the surface. So tell me, how long has this been going on? And don't give me the a few months bullshit again. I want the truth. She finally looked up at me, her eyes puffy and red from crying. About six months, she said quietly. It started when I met him at work. We were just friends at first, you know, talking during breaks, grabbing coffee. But then, it escalated. Escalated? I said bitterly. That's one way to put it. Megan wiped at her eyes, clearly trying to hold it together. It wasn't supposed to be like this, I swear. I didn't set out to cheat on you. It just, happened. I laughed, though there was nothing funny about this. It just happened? You didn't trip and fall into bed with him, Megan. You made a choice. Over and over again, you chose him. She looked down again, shame written all over her face. I was lonely, okay? You've been so distant these past couple of years. Always working, always busy with something else. And I know it sounds like an excuse, but I felt like you didn't care about me anymore. Lonely? I repeated, incredulous. You think I wasn't lonely? You think working my ass off to provide for this family was some kind of vacation for me? Jesus, Megan, I was doing it for us. For you, for the kids. And this is how you repay me? I know, she said, her voice cracking. I know I screwed up. I know I hurt you. But it wasn't like I didn't care about you. I just... I didn't feel like we were connected anymore. Connected? I scoffed. You didn't feel connected, so you decided to go behind my back and fuck another man? Her lip trembled, and she wiped at her face again, the tears coming faster now. I'm not trying to justify it, she said through her sobs. I know what I did was wrong. I know that. But it wasn't just about sex. It was, it was about feeling wanted, feeling like I mattered. I leaned forward, my eyes burning into hers. You mattered, Megan. You were my fucking wife. You were the mother of my children. But I guess that wasn't enough for you. She shook her head, sobbing harder now. I didn't mean for it to go this far. I swear. I wanted to stop, but I didn't know how. I felt trapped in this, cycle. You felt trapped? I spat, slamming my hand down on the table. You felt trapped, so you just kept fucking him? You're unbelievable. Megan flinched at my outburst but didn't try to argue. She just sat there, crying, while I stared at her, disgusted by what she had become. This woman in front of me wasn't the Megan I married. That woman was gone, replaced by this liar who had betrayed me in the worst possible way. I don't even know who you are anymore, I said quietly, the rage draining out of me, leaving only sadness behind. You've destroyed everything. Megan wiped her eyes, sniffling. I know I can't fix this. But I want to try. I want to make things right, if you'll let me. I laughed again, this time out of disbelief. Right? How do you think you can make this right, Megan? You think we can just sweep this under the rug and pretend it never happened? She looked at me, desperate now. No, of course not. But we can work through it. People recover from this. We can go to counseling, we can. No, I said firmly, cutting her off. I'm not going to counseling with you. I'm not going to sit there and listen to someone tell me that this is something we can work through. You slept with another man in our bed. You brought him into our house, Megan. That's not something you come back from. She started sobbing again, her whole body shaking. I'm sorry, she whispered. I'm so sorry. Sorry? I said, my voice low and cold. You're only sorry because you got caught. She didn't have an answer for that. She just sat there, crying, as the weight of what she had done finally seemed to settle on her shoulders. I stood up, unable to stand the sight of her any longer. I'm going to bed, I said, my voice devoid of emotion. We'll talk more in the morning.
but as far as I'm concerned, this marriage is over. Megan looked up at me, her face crumpling in pain. Please don't say that, she begged. Please, let's try. For the kids. I shook my head, disgusted by her attempt to use our children as leverage. Don't you dare bring the kids into this, I snapped. You didn't think about them when you were sneaking around with that asshole, so don't pretend you care about them now. She sobbed harder, but I didn't care anymore. I was done. I walked out of the kitchen, leaving her to cry by herself. As I lay in bed that night, staring at the ceiling, the reality of everything finally hit me. My marriage was over. The life I had built with Megan, the future I thought we were working toward, it was all gone. And for what? For some asshole she met at work? I didn't know what the future held, but I knew one thing for certain, I would never trust her again. And I would never, ever forgive her for what she had done. The next morning, I woke up in a fog. My mind was swirling with the events of the night before, but the anger I had felt was no longer raging at the surface. It was still there, simmering, but now it felt controlled, almost cold. I didn't know what my next move was going to be, but one thing was clear, I wasn't going to let Megan walk away from this unscathed. She had destroyed our marriage, humiliated me, and made a fool out of me in my own home. There was no way in hell I was going to let her get away with it without consequences. I heard her moving around downstairs, probably trying to figure out what I was going to do. I wasn't ready to talk to her just yet, though. Not before I figured out what my plan was. So, I stayed in bed a little longer, my mind racing with different ideas. She thought she could just apologize and make things better, that a few tears would somehow erase the fact that she'd been screwing around behind my back for months. But this wasn't something that could be fixed with words. She needed to understand just how deeply she had messed up. I got up, threw on some clothes, and went downstairs. Megan was sitting at the kitchen table again, staring into a cup of coffee like it held all the answers to the mess she'd created. When she saw me, her eyes lit up with that mix of hope and fear, like she thought maybe, just maybe, I'd be willing to forgive her. She was wrong. Hey, she started, her voice tentative. I was thinking maybe we could talk more today. I know last night was rough, but... Stop, I cut her off, my tone icy. I don't want to hear it. She blinked, her face falling. But we need to talk. I want to explain. I said stop, I repeated, more forcefully this time. You don't get to explain anything. You don't get to make excuses for what you did. You ruined this, Megan. You. So don't sit there acting like we can just have a nice little chat and move on. Her mouth opened and closed a few times, but she didn't say anything. I could see the gears turning in her head, trying to figure out what she could possibly say to make this better. But I wasn't interested in hearing her lies or half-assed justifications. I had a different plan in mind. I've been thinking about what you said, I continued, leaning against the kitchen counter, my arms crossed. About how you were lonely and how I didn't pay enough attention to you. I said it with a sneer, letting her know just how much bullshit I thought that was. So, I decided that maybe you're right. Maybe you did feel neglected. And maybe, just maybe, I can help you fix that. Her eyes narrowed, clearly unsure where I was going with this. What do you mean? I gave her a cold smile. You said you wanted attention, right? Well, now you're going to get all the attention you could ever ask for. You think you can just fuck around behind my back and get away with it? Let's see how much you like it when everyone else knows what kind of person you really are. Megan's eyes widened in panic. What? No, please, you can't. Oh, but I can, I said, enjoying the fear creeping into her voice. And I will. You didn't think about the consequences when you were screwing that guy in our house, did you? You didn't think about what would happen when the truth came out. Well, now you're going to find out. I could see the color drain from her face as the weight of what I was saying sank in. She knew exactly what I was talking about. Our social circle, our friends, the kids' school, her family, I was going to make sure that everyone knew exactly what kind of woman she really was. The perfect wife and mother act she'd been putting on for so long was about to come crashing down. 
You don't have to do this, she pleaded, her voice shaky. We can fix this, I swear. Just don't, don't do that. Please. I laughed bitterly. Fix this? You think I'm interested in fixing anything with you? No, Megan. I'm not going to fix this. I'm going to make sure you feel every ounce of the pain you've put me through. You wanted attention? Well, now you've got it. I could see the panic building in her eyes, and for a brief moment, I almost felt sorry for her. Almost. But then I remembered what I had seen, the texts, the footage of that guy walking into my house like he owned the place, the way she'd kissed him without a second thought. That sympathy evaporated as quickly as it had come. I'll tell the kids, she blurted out suddenly, desperation clear in her voice. I'll explain it to them myself. They don't need to hear it from you or anyone else. I shook my head. No. You don't get to control this anymore. You lost that right when you decided to cheat. The truth is going to come out, Megan, whether you like it or not. And it's going to come from me. She stood up from the table, her hands shaking. You don't understand. You'll destroy everything. Our family, our lives, everything. You already destroyed everything, I snapped. Don't you dare try to turn this on me. This is on you, and now you're going to deal with the fallout. I could see the gears turning in her head as she tried to figure out how to stop me. She was panicking now, clearly realizing that she had lost all control over the situation. And that was exactly how I wanted her to feel, powerless. I'll leave, she said quietly, her voice trembling. I'll pack my things and go. You won't have to see me again, and you can keep the house. Just, please don't tell everyone. Don't ruin my life like that. I stared at her for a long moment, the anger simmering inside me, but something about the way she said it stopped me from agreeing right away. Part of me wanted her gone, wanted her to pack her bags and disappear so I wouldn't have to deal with her anymore. But another part of me, the angrier, vengeful part, wasn't satisfied with that. Not yet. You think leaving is enough? I asked, my voice low. You think walking away is going to make up for what you did? You don't get off that easy, Megan. She stared at me, eyes wide, not sure what else to say. She had clearly expected me to jump at the chance to be rid of her, but that wasn't what this was about. I wasn't going to let her slink away into the night without feeling the consequences of her actions. I'm not just going to let you walk out of here and pretend this never happened, I said coldly. You're going to face this head on, and you're going to feel the shame and guilt that comes with it. No more hiding. No more sneaking around. She started crying again, her whole body shaking as she sobbed. Please, just let me leave, she begged. I'll do anything, just don't tell anyone. But I wasn't interested in her tears. They were too little, too late. You should have thought about that before you brought another man into my house, I said, my voice sharp. This isn't something you can just walk away from. I watched as the weight of her situation sank in further. She was trapped, and she knew it. There was no easy way out. And for the first time since this whole mess started, I felt a sliver of satisfaction. She had put me through hell, and now it was her turn to suffer. The look on Megan's face as she realized just how much control she had lost was almost satisfying, but not quite enough. I had always been the reasonable one in our relationship, the one who kept his cool and looked for solutions. But that man was gone. The anger bubbling inside me wasn't the kind that would cool down after one argument, and Megan needed to understand that. She had destroyed everything, and now she was going to pay for it. I wanted her to feel every ounce of the humiliation, regret, and pain she had brought into our lives. As she stood there sobbing, begging me to let her leave, my mind raced with possibilities. I wasn't about to let her sneak away quietly and start over somewhere else like none of this had ever happened. No, that would be too easy. She had betrayed me in the worst way possible, and I wasn't going to let her off the hook. She had to face the consequences, not just from me, but from everyone in her life. I glanced over at her phone sitting on the kitchen counter. That same phone where I discovered the messages, the affair, and all the disgusting details of her relationship with Matt. I picked it up, 
turning it over in my hand, and an idea started to form. You know, I said, keeping my tone casual as I unlocked the phone, she hadn't bothered to change the password, stupidly trusting that I wouldn't dare look through it again. It's funny how you've been so careful to hide all of this from me, but you didn't seem to care if anyone else found out. What would happen if your friends, our friends, saw the truth? You think they'd still respect you? Still trust you? Her face drained of color. What are you doing? She asked, her voice trembling with panic. I'm doing what you should have thought about before you decided to screw around with another man, I said coldly, scrolling through her phone until I found her group chat with her friends. The same group of people we'd hung out with for years, going to parties, barbecues, school events for the kids. People who probably had no idea who the real Megan was. Don't, she pleaded, stepping forward like she was going to grab the phone from me. Please, don't do this. It's not going to solve anything. I held the phone up, smirking at her. Maybe not. But it'll make me feel a hell of a lot better. Before she could stop me, I opened the group chat and started typing. It was simple enough, just a screenshot of one of her flirty messages with Matt, followed by a quick line, this is the real Megan. Thought you all should know what she's been up to. Megan lunged for the phone, but I held it out of her reach, sending the message before she could do anything about it. Her face crumpled, and she collapsed into a chair, burying her head in her hands. No, no, she sobbed, her whole body shaking as the realization of what I'd done hit her. They'll hate me. Good, I said, my voice hard. They should. You deserve it. She looked up at me, her face twisted in pain. You didn't have to do that. I stared at her, my anger flaring again. I didn't have to do a lot of things, Megan. But you made your choices, and now you're going to deal with the fallout. You think you're the victim here? You think your tears are going to fix this? Her sobbing only got worse, and for a moment, I almost felt something like pity. But I crushed that feeling before it could take root. I couldn't afford to be soft. Not now. What did you think was going to happen? I demanded, leaning over the table so I was right in her face. Did you really think you could keep sneaking around forever? That I'd never find out? Did you think you could live two lives, one with me and the kids and another with that asshole from your office? How long did you plan on keeping this up? She didn't answer right away, just sobbed harder, like she couldn't even find the words to defend herself. I wasn't sure if that was because she felt ashamed or because she knew there was no excuse good enough to make up for what she had done. Either way, I wasn't interested in hearing it. You said you were lonely, I continued, my voice low and dangerous. But guess what? I was lonely too. I was busting my ass every day to keep this family going, and you were out there doing God knows what behind my back. You didn't think about the kids, about what this would do to them. You didn't think about me. You only thought about yourself. She looked up at me with tear-streaked cheeks, trying to speak through her sobs. I didn't want to hurt you. I laughed bitterly. Well, you failed. You've hurt me more than anyone ever has. And now I'm going to make sure you understand exactly what that feels like. She wiped at her eyes, her voice shaky. What are you going to do? You've already told my friends, what else is left? I stared at her for a long moment, the wheels turning in my head. What else was left? Sure, I had told her friends, humiliated her in front of the people she had once considered her inner circle. But there was more I could do. There was always more. I grabbed her phone again, scrolling through her contacts until I found her parents' number. Megan's parents were old-fashioned, traditional, the kind of people who believed in family values and the sanctity of marriage. They adored me, thought I was the perfect husband for their daughter, and had no idea what kind of betrayal she had been involved in. What are you doing now? Megan asked, her voice rising in panic as she saw me hovering over her parents' contact. Letting them know who their daughter really is, I said simply. Her eyes went wide with terror. No, no, please don't. My parents, God, they'll never forgive me. They'll disown me. Maybe you should have thought about that before you decided to cheat, I said coldly, my finger hovering over the call button. 
She lunged at me again, this time with more desperation, grabbing at my arm, trying to wrestle the phone out of my hand. But I was stronger, and I shoved her back easily. She stumbled, nearly falling to the ground, before catching herself on the edge of the table. Please, I'm begging you, she cried, falling to her knees in front of me, clutching at my pant leg like some pathetic child. Don't tell them. I'll do anything. Just, don't do this to me. Not my parents. I looked down at her, my stomach churning with a mixture of rage and disgust. There she was, the woman I had once loved, reduced to a sobbing, desperate mess on the floor. She was broken now, completely shattered by the fear of losing everything. And while part of me reveled in that, another part of me couldn't help but feel, hollow. I had spent so long planning my revenge, so long thinking about how I would make her suffer. And now that I had her on her knees, begging for mercy, it didn't feel as good as I thought it would. Sure, I had humiliated her, broken her down, but there was no victory in it. No satisfaction. I didn't lower the phone, though. I wasn't ready to back down just yet. You should have thought about what this would do to everyone, I said slowly, looking down at her. You didn't just betray me, Megan. You betrayed our kids, our families, everyone who trusted you. And now you're going to face the consequences. Her sobbing intensified, but I ignored it, my fingers still hovering over the call button. I could feel the weight of the moment pressing down on me, the decision I was about to make hanging in the air. For the next few days, the house felt like a graveyard. Megan barely spoke, moving around like a ghost, eyes red and puffy from crying. She had broken down that morning, but I wasn't interested in comforting her. I watched her, still boiling with anger, as she tried to pick up the pieces of her life, but I knew there wasn't enough glue in the world to fix what she had shattered. She hadn't gone to work since everything blew up. The humiliation from the group chat I had sent must have spread like wildfire among her friends. She got the occasional text or call, but every time her phone buzzed, she just looked at it, flinched, and turned it face down. The once overly confident woman was now crumbling under the weight of her own mess. I, on the other hand, wasted no time. I had made up my mind, there was no fixing this, no reconciliation. Megan's betrayal was too deep, and there was no way I'd ever trust her again. So while she spent her days trying to figure out how to salvage her wrecked social life, I was busy behind the scenes, filing for divorce. It wasn't something I wanted to broadcast just yet. The kids didn't need to know what was happening until I had everything in place. I wanted to protect them from the chaos as much as I could. But as for Megan, well, I was going to hit her with it when the time was right. The lawyer I hired was no joke. I wasn't looking to drag things out or get emotional about the process. I just wanted it done quickly and cleanly. Megan could keep the house, I didn't care. I just wanted out, and I wanted her out of my life. The lawyer, a no-nonsense guy named Greg, assured me that I had the upper hand. After all, I had the evidence of her affair. I had the moral high ground, and if she fought back, it wouldn't end well for her. I started putting things in place. Moving money around, setting up new accounts. I wasn't going to let her take me for a ride financially either. Every day I was working on my escape plan, step by step. And Megan? Well, she was still floundering, barely holding it together. I think she knew something was coming, but she didn't have the guts to ask. About a week after everything had gone down, I decided it was time. I had filed for divorce earlier that morning, and now I had to tell her. There was no way I was going to stay in this sham of a marriage, and she needed to know exactly where we stood. She was sitting on the couch, staring blankly at the TV, not even really watching it. I sat down across from her, feeling that familiar mix of anger and disgust. It was time for the final conversation, and I wasn't going to sugarcoat anything. Megan, I started, my voice cold and direct. She turned her head slowly, like she knew what was coming. We need to talk. She didn't say anything at first, just stared at me with those tired, broken eyes. What is it? She finally asked, her voice barely above a whisper. I've filed for divorce, I said flatly. Her face crumpled, and she looked down at her hands, shaking her head like she was trying to hold back the flood of emotions. No, you can't. We can fix this. 
We can go to therapy, work through it. I cut her off before she could even finish. There's nothing to fix, Megan. This marriage is over. You killed it the moment you decided to sleep with that asshole. Her eyes welled up with tears, and she reached out like she wanted to take my hand, but I pulled away, standing up. I wasn't about to let her play the victim. We can't just throw everything away, she pleaded, her voice cracking. We've been together for so long. We can't just end it like this. I laughed bitterly, shaking my head. You ended it when you decided that screwing around behind my back was more important than our family. You threw it all away, Megan, not me. She stood up too, wiping her eyes, trying to hold herself together. It didn't mean anything, she whispered. I was lonely, I made a mistake, but it didn't mean anything. I love you, I always have. That was it. I couldn't listen to that bullshit anymore. Love me? I snapped, my voice rising. You don't love me. If you loved me, you wouldn't have gone behind my back, you wouldn't have brought that man into our house, into our bed. Don't stand there and pretend like this is something we can work through. You made your choices, and now you're going to live with the consequences. She flinched at my words, her hands trembling. What about the kids, she asked, her voice shaking. We can't do this to them. They need both of us. We'll figure out what's best for the kids, I said, my voice steady. But that doesn't change what's happening between us. This marriage is dead, Megan. I'm done. Her sobbing grew louder, and she collapsed back onto the couch, covering her face with her hands. Please, don't do this, she begged through her tears. I'll do anything. I'll quit my job, I'll never talk to him again, I'll. I cut her off again, my anger boiling over. You're too late, I said harshly. None of that matters anymore. You've done enough damage already. There's no going back from this. She was crying so hard now, she could barely speak. I can't lose you, she sobbed. I can't. I love you. I'll do anything, just please, don't leave me. Her words didn't move me. I was beyond caring about her tears or her promises. She had made her bed, and now she had to lie in it. You already lost me, I said coldly, walking toward the door. You lost me the moment you chose him over us. I left her there, sobbing on the couch, completely shattered. But I didn't feel any satisfaction this time. I didn't feel like I had one. All I felt was empty, like the life we had built together was nothing more than a house of cards that had come crashing down around us. As I stood outside, taking in the cool evening air, I realized that the worst part wasn't the betrayal itself. It was that everything I had believed about our marriage, our life together, was a lie. Megan had destroyed it all, and there was no putting it back together. I wasn't going to look back. I wasn't going to give her another chance. This was it. Our marriage was over, and there was no saving it. For now, I had to focus on moving forward. I had a long road ahead of me, and I knew it wouldn't be easy. But at least I was free from the lies, the betrayal, the endless cycle of pretending everything was fine when it wasn't. And Megan? Well, she would have to live with the mess she had made of her life. In the days that followed, everything moved quickly. Megan had withdrawn into herself completely. She barely left the house, and when she did, it was clear she was a shell of the person she once was. Her social life had evaporated. The fallout from the group chat I'd exposed had spread like wildfire. Friends stopped calling, texts went unanswered, and the few people who did reach out were more interested in gossip than offering support. I didn't care. Whatever sympathy she had hoped to gather had dried up. People saw her for what she truly was, a cheater who had thrown away her marriage for some fling that meant nothing. Megan had to pick up the pieces of the wreckage she created, and I had zero interest in helping her anymore. I focused on the divorce proceedings, determined to get through it with as little drama as possible. My lawyer, Greg, was a bulldog. He made sure I wasn't taken advantage of and kept everything moving at a steady pace. Megan, on the other hand, didn't fight much. She had lost the will to put up any kind of defense. 
I think part of her still held on to the delusion that I would change my mind, that I'd eventually come around and decide to forgive her. But she was wrong. The house felt like a Cold War zone. We barely spoke. When we did, it was strained and tense, usually about mundane things, schedules for the kids, groceries, bills. It was like living with a stranger, but the anger that had fueled me in the beginning was starting to fade. In its place was something emptier, something colder. I was done fighting, done seeking revenge. The damage was done, and I was ready to move on. One evening, a few weeks after I filed for divorce, Megan finally approached me. I was sitting in the living room, going over some paperwork when she walked in. She stood there for a moment, unsure of how to start. I didn't look up, just kept my focus on the documents in front of me. We need to talk, she said quietly, her voice shaky but more composed than it had been in weeks. I didn't say anything at first, just finished reading the last line of the document before setting it down and meeting her eyes. About what? She hesitated, wringing her hands together, clearly nervous. I just... I wanted to know where we go from here. What happens next? I stared at her for a moment, trying to gauge what she was really asking. What happens next? I repeated, leaning back in my chair. We finalize the divorce. We figure out how to co-parent the kids. And we move on with our lives. She winced, like the word divorce was a physical blow. So, that's it, she asked, her voice trembling. After all these years, it just ends like this? I sighed, feeling a mix of frustration and exhaustion. What did you expect, Megan? That we'd just patch things up, pretend none of this ever happened? You cheated on me for months. You lied to me, brought another man into our home. What exactly do you think is left to salvage? She looked down, her shoulders slumping as the weight of her actions pressed down on her. I didn't want this, she whispered. I never wanted it to end like this. I shook my head, my voice hardening again. You made your choices. You knew what you were doing every step of the way. And now you have to live with the consequences. Her eyes filled with tears, but I didn't feel sympathy anymore. I had gone through the anger, the betrayal, the bitterness. Now, all that was left was a cold acceptance of the situation. There was no going back. No fixing this. I'm sorry, she said, her voice cracking as the tears spilled down her cheeks. I don't know how to fix this. I don't know how to make it right. You can't, I said bluntly. There's no making this right. You destroyed everything, Megan. And now, it's time to move on. She wiped at her face, sniffling, trying to hold herself together. What about the kids? How do we tell them? I had thought about that more than anything else. The kids were still young, and I didn't want to destroy their sense of stability. We tell them the truth, I said firmly. That sometimes, marriages don't work out. That we're going to be living separately, but that we both still love them and will do everything we can to make sure they're okay. She nodded, looking defeated. I never wanted to hurt them. Then you should have thought about that before you did this, I said, my voice icy. But now we have to deal with it. The silence between us was heavy, filled with everything that had been left unsaid. She had no more excuses, no more justifications. Just a hollow apology that meant nothing at this point. I'll move out, she said quietly after a long pause. Once the divorce is finalized, I'll leave. You can keep the house. I just want to make sure the kids are okay. That's your call, I said. I'll be staying here. The kids will need stability, and I'm not uprooting them because of your mistakes. She nodded again, the tears still streaming down her face. I'm sorry, she whispered one last time, her voice breaking. I know that doesn't fix anything, but I am. I stood up done with the conversation. I don't need your apology, Megan. I need you to own what you've done and accept that this is the end. She broke down again, but I didn't wait around to comfort her. I left the room, feeling the finality of it all settle over me. This was the end of our marriage, and no amount of tears or apologies could change that. Over the next few weeks, everything fell into place. 
The divorce was finalized quicker than I expected, and Megan moved out shortly after. We worked out a custody arrangement for the kids, nothing too complicated. I had no interest in dragging them through a bitter custody battle. I just wanted them to have some sense of normalcy in the middle of all this chaos. Megan disappeared from my life as quickly as she had blown it up. She found a place nearby, something small where she could start over. I didn't ask about her, didn't check in. I didn't care what she did anymore. The only thing that mattered to me now was rebuilding my life without her. The house felt empty at first. The silence was deafening. But after a while, I started to fill it with new routines, new habits. The kids came over regularly, and I threw myself into being there for them. I wasn't about to let Megan's betrayal ruin my relationship with them. They were the only thing that still mattered. It wasn't easy. Every now and then, the memories of what had happened would creep back in, and the anger would flare up again. But I had made my decision. I was moving forward, and there was no turning back. Megan had tried to destroy my life, but I wasn't going to let her. I had too much to live for, too much left to rebuild. And while the scars of her betrayal would always be there, I knew one thing for sure, I was stronger now. Stronger than the lies, stronger than the pain, and stronger than the woman who had once torn my world apart.